Welcome to another Shadron tutorial and today I would like to show you exactly how the model capabilities work in Shadron, which is a feature that allows you to define a procedural vertex shader which will generate the geometry of a 3D model. So if we look at the documentation, here you can find the modal object and as you can see it is defined by a uh, model keyword a name and then a sequence of modifiers and here are the modifiers you can use but uh, the first three are the most important ones and actually only the vertex modifier is the uh, is required the the other ones are optional so you have to specify the vertex shader and it is specified by a function that will return the coordinate for each vertex, a primitive type which will say how to um, combine the vertices into geometric primitives and the total number of vertices, the vertex count. So let's try it and let's start with something very simple. So for example, we can draw a triangle. So let's create the model object named triangle and add the vertex modifier, which will contain the name of the function, the configuration triangles and three vertices. The vertex shader function returns a four component vector and receives the index of the current vertex. So for example, what we can do is a condition if the index is zero, let's uh, return the, the coordinate of the first vertex for one, the second vertex and for index 2, the third vertex of the triangle. And we need to output a four-dimensional affine coordinate. So let's set the x and y to the two-dimensional coordinate. z will be 0 for now and the affine coordinate must be 1 for points. So right now we have a triangle but it is a bit jagged so let's we can also enable multi sampling so that it is a bit anti aliased and now we can also add a fragment shader so if we want to for example make it a different color then you can specify the color in the fragment shader but as you, as you can see the problem is that the fragment shader has no inputs so to be able to do anything else than a solid color we also need to pass some data from the vertex shader to the fragment shader and that is done using the fragment data modifier. So let's uh, define a structure for the fragment data, which will be passed from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. And we need to add it as an output argument to the vertex shader and an input argument to the fragment shader and set the value in the vertex shader. So for example, if we set a different color for every vertex, and now we just uh, output the color from the fragment data, you can see in the output that uh, the color is basically interpolated depending on which vertex is closest. So 
This works quite well for things like colors or texture coordinates and things like that. So let's try something slightly harder, for example a regular n-sided polygon. So we will need pi, so include math constant, and let's add a parameter for the number of sides. So we will have more than just one triangle, so first of all what we will do is determine the index of the current triangle and we will apply modulo on the index so that now it is basically the index of the vertex of the current triangle. So the total number of vertices will be now three times the sides of the polygon. So a triangle for each side. So the first vertex of each triangle will be the center. And for the second and the third one, we have to compute an angle um, in which direction it is uh, from the center. So this is depending on the current triangle divided by the total number of sides and multiplied by tau which is 2 times pi and the last vertex will be the same but it will be actually just shifted by 1. So here will be triangle minus 1 and the coordinates will be the sine and cosine of this angle. Maybe just one half because we don't want it to be uh, too large. And now as you can see we have the polygon and you can also see how it is divided into the triangles because of the colors. So let's maybe tone it down a little bit and remove the different colors and make it just white for now. So having a polygon still isn't really too exciting. So let's maybe try a 3D model and an easy way to do that would be perhaps to kind of shift the middle of the of the polygon, the middle vertex, out into the third dimension. So what I will do is, first of all, I will separate the, uh, the computation of the coordinate to a separate function. You will see later why. So let's just copy this uh, to a separate function and now we will change the coordinate from a two-dimensional vector to a three-dimensional and the first coordinate will be at z1 and the other ones will be at z0 so that that way it is uh, well the first coordinate always sticks out a bit So if we do it this way, we still don't really see it being 3D because we are looking at it from the top basically and it is uh, just uh, filled with a single color so you can't really tell. So let's add some rotation parameters which we can use to rotate it and to be able to see it better. If we rotate it in the z and x dimension um, and to do that we will include the affine transformation library which has many functions like these which allow you to rotate, scale, translate, do things like this. 
so include we will include this and now we have these functions like rotate z rotate around the z axis rotate around the x axis so now when we rotate it you can kind of see the shape but it is still just one color so it is not very clear so what might help a little bit is if we enable the wireframe mode so that instead of being filled we will just see the uh, outlines of the of the individual triangles so that will show the structure a bit better now let's turn this into a crystal by adding the exact same structure to the opposite side so we will double the amount of vertices and for the second half we will flip the x and z coordinate and now we have a kind of a crystal shape so right now we haven't used any sort of projection so this is basically the orthographic projection which doesn't really uh, isn't really a good way to uh, visualize 3d models so let's instead use the perspective projection and for that we also have a function in the affine transformations library so if we look at the documentation um, you can see several variants of the of the or orthographic and perspective projections and right now we will use this one which is basically the HFOV means that it has a uh, fixed horizontal field of view angle so for example regardless of the windows dimensions it will al always have 90 degrees of field of view in the horizontal dimension the perspective projection basically originates in the middle so basically as if the camera was at the zero 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 point so we are basically inside the model so we will just shift it a little bit back so that we can look at it from outside from the outside So yeah, now we have now we have the 3D model with perspective projection, but uh, to make it actually look at least a bit 3D, what we need to do now is add lighting. So let's include the lighting library, and actually before we can have lighting, we first need to have normals. So I'm not going to explain this into too much detail but basically a normal is a vector that is perpendicular to the surface and has a unit length so because now we have a function for the coordinates what we can do is basically find out the current triangle and and compute all three of its vertices and based on that compute the normal of the triangle using the cross product because the cross product of two vectors is the vector that is per perpendicular to it so this will be the normal and of course, to be the actual normal, it has to be normalized. So now we will compute the normal and we have to transfer it to the fragment shader through the fragment data.
And once we are in the fragment shader, we can now use a function from the lightning library. So we can find here, for example, a diffuse light function, which needs a light direction and the surface normal. And both of these have to be normalized. So let's just make up some random light direction and normalize it. And once we put those values in, we will get the intensity of the diffuse lighting. And we will basically just multiply the color by the light intensity. But right now, as you can see, it is very dark. So it might be a good idea to add, for example, one half of uh, default light, which is always present, sometimes called the ambient light, and one half the light intensity we just computed so that it is not as dark. So that's it for now and remember that these were just the very basics and I think it looks quite good for something you can do in five or ten minutes and I would like to point out that you don't have to always make the geometry completely from scratch. There are some pre-made meshes in the Shaderun library and to conclude this, I believe I have already demonstrated that creating 3D models procedurally can have some pretty interesting results. So these are some demos of procedural 3D models that I've already shown before. And I hope you liked this tutorial and see you next time.